next step in the process, or process as Luke would say, being from Australia, I have a lot of Canadian friends and they say process also, um, is to add the ground cover, the static grass. But what he does first, which I've never seen this before, and it's definitely correct, is he figures out where to place the trees because grass doesn't grow as thick underneath the trees. And so he doesn't put static grass up uh, underneath the trees as thick. So later on I'll, in the video, I'll walk down the street and I'll show you s some trees down uh, by the recreation center that's close to me. And you can see that the grass just definitely isn't as thick under the tree. So I'm going to pl plan how many trees. Now this is how many trees I have available to use. Um, again, this is not an endorsement. I don't, I don't get, you know, I don't endorse things for people. Uh, these trees are from my Long Shadows model trees. I saw um, some in some pictures and I bought some. Uh, he is a subscriber, really good guy, uh, but I bought these and uh, I think they look good. I think they look much better than the cheap woodland scenics trees that I had on my Chalkati layout. Uh, one thing I really like about them is the height. Um, the woodland scenics trees just weren't tall enough. So anyhow, I like them. Uh, I am going to experiment with making my own trees just because I think model railroaders should try to do that <laughs> at some point. I've never made trees. So I'm going, I've got some materials and I'll be experimenting making trees for the layout. But I think for consistency purposes, I should use trees that are sort of similar you know, in appearance on this layout. Like I don't want to mix woodland scenic trees with these. So I'm going to plan where to put these. Now I've got way more trees here than I need. I'm not going to put that many on here. But what Luke does is he goes ahead and he Puts, you know, pokes a hole, sticks the tree in. When he's happy with it, he pulls the tree out and puts a little flag there so he knows that this tree goes back in that spot. I would say on this module, I'll probably have maybe, you know, five or six trees. We'll see. Um, I can probably have two or three up here, maybe have one here. Uh, I don't think I'll put any behind the bridge back there, but. You know, I could see two, three, four here, so maybe I'll have more, but I've got, let's see, three, six, seven, I've got 11 trees. I'm not going to put 11 trees on this. Uh, so I'm going to start trying to figure out where they go, and I'll, uh, when I get it, them in place, I will show you what that looks like, and then I'll show you how to mark uh, the places with the uh, flags. Here's what I decided on. I used nine trees. Um, some of these are supposed to be oaks and some are supposed to be birch. Uh, the main way to tell the difference is on the birch. He's got some white highlighting. It's like river birches. They tend to grow close to rivers, you know, uh, moist soil, and they are the ones that have like the peeling bark and stuff. And the oaks have the darker um, bark on them. Like this, this is an oak up here. Um, the foliage itself isn't that much difference. This is mainly the colors of the trunks. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make some little flags and I'm going to put a number one here and a number one and a piece of styrofoam I've got and I'll put that tree there and so I know when I'm done I can put this tree back in that spot since I'm happy with it. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, the trees have been pulled and the flags are in place. I just use post-it notes, double-sided tape, and toothpick. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I had to drill holes to put the you know trees in, obviously through the the plaster. Um, I thought I could just sort of poke it through there, but it was a little bit harder than I thought. And one of the things about uh, Long Shadows trees is the diameter of the trunks are. I mean, they're mature trees. And in scale, they're mature trees. You know, they're, they're two, three foot in diameter, um, which is okay. You know, I mean, I like, I like mature trees. Uh, but uh, so 
it's, you just can't like take an ice pick and poke through plaster. Uh, it's not like a little piece of uh, uh, a plant or something like that. They're definitely thicker around in the base. Um, I'll swivel around here. Got it on the gimbal here. And there's my row of trees. So as long as I don't drop that on the way to the workbench, because they're not fastened in there, obviously, really great, I'm okay. I've got the grass door shut today because it's a little cool and breezy. Uh, cool doesn't bother me, but the breeze, you know, don't really want it blowing all this, this stuff around. So um, next I'm going to take a walk down the street and I'm going to show you why Luke does what he does and why I'm copying Luke. All right, I just uh, walked down the street uh, I live on. Uh, this is the, it's called the Pavilion. It's our uh, recreation center for the county. Indoor pool and um, it's where like the high school team has their swim meets and things. And gym, running track, basketball courts, things like that. You can see that how thin the grass is under these trees. These are thin oak trees. Um, but as I walk on down, I mean, there's a lot of bare dirt here. Just a whole lot. You can see tree roots, which I may try to do some of that. And as soon as you get out from underneath the trees, there aren't any bare spots. It's just grass. So that's what Luke tries to do. That's a detail that a lot of people, including me, haven't noticed. <laughs> so, um, Anyhow, so that, that's why he does that, and that's why I'm going to do it. I'm going to have a lot more bare dirt showing under the trees. So you're about to see my first real attempt at static grass. Uh, I bought the Woodland Scenics little starter kit uh, one time that had like a shaker. They just a plastic shaker. You shake it up and try to generate static electricity. And I used that on the other layout. Eh, I wasn't that impressed with it. Uh, so, I already showed you that I bought a Static King from Woodland Sinks. I'm not going to do an unboxing video. This is what you get for it if you get with it if you're thinking about it. Get these two different screens for different size of flock. Uh, this is a divider in case you want to put different colors on a, you know, one side or different lengths on one side. Here's the comb that you uh, comb it with. This is a little uh, grounding thing you can just sit in the area. You've got the grounding plug. I don't know what the screwdriver's for yet. I haven't read the directions. And there's the directions. <laughs> so I'm going to read the directions before I try to start to use it. Uh, when I was at the hobby shop the other day, I did get some supplies. I opted to buy the power supply for the uh, Static King. I haven't heard that great things about the batteries. Not know how long the battery would last. Uh, in the kit, the starter kit that you get from Woodland Sanix with the hand shaker, it comes with these two little bags. Of grass uh, I've got this bag here uh, I bought this at the hobby shop um, and then I bought these two scene master uh, things from the it didn't really tell the length on these it just says HO short grass so I don't know if it's uh, two millimeter four millimeter not sure what it is this is what I'm going to be using uh, so we we'll read the directions and we're going to learn together you know you'll see my first attempt at doing this Okay, so this is the back corner of the module. <laughs> Since I haven't done this, I figured I'd start somewhere where I couldn't screw up. So I didn't just paint it with the uh, static tack, which I've got a little bit of, came in the starter set. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to try Luke's method here, where I'm not going to attach the... Um, Pretty cool. <laughs> now they say that the um, 
grass will tend to stick straight up from the surface that it's on and we really want it to stand straight up even though it's on a slope. I'm going to put a little bit more in this of a different uh, color, just a hair, because I can still see a little bit of glue, and then I'm going to brush it up. So let me stop the camera while I do that. Okay, so I've put some 7 millimeter grass in here, and it's supposed to be like a little bit more yellow to it. So I'm going to, I didn't put a whole lot in because of the this is a really small area that I'm doing. All right. Now I'm going to take the comb, try to do this left handed, and I'm going to comb that so it's going up. Because you want it not to be perpendicular to the slope you want it to be facing more toward the sun so you try to say get it to go up so again this is you're seeing my first attempt <laughs> I didn't practice on anything I probably should have now this extra static grass that's all over the place I'm going to take a vacuum with a sock on the end of it I'm going to um, vacuum it up and then I can put it back in the bag. I told you I had the garage door closed and we had an unexpected rain shower. I just had a couple of rainbows. My wife got real excited. I had to go watch them. So let me doctor this up a little bit, and then I'll bring you back in. I know we're all looking forward to the day we don't have to wear a face mask. Found a good use for one. Uh, put it on the end of the vacuum shop back and catch all the extra static grass. So that's what my first attempt looked like. Does it look as good as Luke's? No. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. I left, uh, you know, you saw when I put the glue on, I had some bare spots. Maybe I still had too much glue. Maybe the static grass is going to spread out over those a little bit. So my next attempt, I'm going to leave wider gaps in between the glue and uh, see what that does. And I'll probably try to do a little section right up in here because that's going to be mostly behind trees anyhow. Uh, so I'll try to see what that looks like. Okay, so you can see I've got the glue, a lot bigger gaps in there. I'm still drawing an area that's mostly going to be hidden. Uh, I have rotated around. Hopefully you can see it uh, a little bit. There we go. So let's try it again. Seems to be doing better. So it's definitely standing up more. Probably should be doing this with my other hand. Strong right hand dominant. I can do almost nothing left handed. <laughs> gaps there. I think I'm about out in the hopper, so I'll turn it off. I think that looks a whole lot better. So I'm liking that. So I'm going to clean up that uh, extra static grass. And of course, I'm getting some on the floor too, but not that much. Uh, and keep going. Move the camera a little bit so you can see it. I'm liking that a lot better. There's a lot more uh, 
bare dirt and of course it's going to be covered with other scenery materials. I'm not going to have that much bare dirt when I'm done. Um, I like it. It's a, it does a good job. Of course I don't have anything to compare it to. It's not like I can say this is better than the Pico version or anything. It's the only one I've ever used. Uh, one thing I don't like, and I'm sure Woodland Scenics has heard this, you have to, the, the, sieve, the sieve on the end is held on with a little screw. And I can just see that little screw, I mean it's, you know, a uh, quarter inch long, slipping out of your fingers and rolling underneath something. Uh, I would think there would be a better method to connect that sieve, a faster method. Give you a little screwdriver, a little screw, but uh, you know, for somebody with normal size hands or whatever it's going to be, uh, I can definitely see dropping that screw somewhere and of course I don't have a spare, I'll have to scrounge around the toolbox or something uh, to fasten it on with. But uh, besides that, it really is doing a good job. Yeah, I took the camera off the tripod. Um, so basically I dabbed the glue on and I sprinkled the static grass and then I go up with the shop back with a sock over the end. The uh, mask was too thick. <laughs> it's, it, it wasn't doing a good enough job. So I just used a, an old sock that I put over the end. Uh, it's lucky I could find one without holes in it. But uh, Anyhow, the, the vacuum also helped stand the grass up. So, you know, it's not a lawn. It doesn't have to be perfectly manicured. I do see over here, I don't have as much of the taller grass in it as I do over here. Because that's when I first started, like back here. This is on the back side, so you're not going to see it much anyhow. But what you end up doing is when you vacuum it up, you get a mixture of both. So I just keep on mixing it. I think this looks pretty daggone good. I'm <laughs> pretty happy with it. Now, of course, there's going to be other stuff. Uh, in here, grind up the leaves and all that. Uh, so I've got basically, uh, that's probably about half of it. I got about half of it done. It didn't take take that long. I'm going to keep working on it, try to get this all done tonight so I can uh, do something else in the morning. It's morning and uh, everything's dry. I'm going to tack this on to the end of the video and uh, go ahead and post it. Here's something, a uh, tip that I forgot to talk about. Uh, make these flags really short because if like this one is a couple inches above so I couldn't get the static uh, grass applicator uh, Very close and you're supposed to get it. It says the directions to a half to three inches. Now. That's not three inches, but still um, You, you want to get it pretty close to the uh, work So I should have cut these flags way down uh, Remember there's a plywood base underneath this. So that's why that one is sticking up a lot higher than say that one because there's a lot more foam on this one uh, but they should just barely be above the ground so post your questions and comments and uh, everybody have a, a good weekend and I'm going to keep working on this adding some uh, ground cover and I'll uh, show you what that looks like either tonight or tomorrow everybody stay safe